All right, quick introduction of myself. I'm Kelvin Man. I'm based from Singapore, right? Um, I'm actually a, a senior SE. And basically what I'm going to do today is actually kind of talk about when bad things happen to your data. So basically I come from this company called Keston, right? It was acquired by Veeam like uh, four years back. So today I'm actually going to walk through you a particular scenario and then I'm going to kind of show you a can demo. And if time persists, we we'll start to do a Q&A and, and basically, <coughs> and, and I've, I can do a live demo if you want to, right? But live demo is just, right? So disclaimer, right? Um, all these are fictional. I'm just, I'm just based on certain things on maybe a little bit thing on real world events. So about me, right? I started off as an AS4 engineer and transit. Well, it started. Uh, I transit to be an AX engineer and then do a lot like OpenStack, Azure Stack. I've actually paid myself to OpenStack Summit in Tokyo last time ago and San Diego for for KubeCon, right? Now. I'm always trying to developing my six packs and uh, unfortunately it doesn't happen, right? I have my Barbie, Barbie wife there and the two daughters, right? 20 plus years experience, but in, in reality is the two daughters are my, the, 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 the two kids from The Shining, right? And uh, uh, Harley Quinn, uh, Harley Quinn from, uh, let, me, let me talk about that. Okay, so Let's look at when you develop your applications, okay? you are going to put in new applications into your application stack. You're managing at some point, right? You will encounter the bad style at some point, whether do it when you do it, when you are releasing new upgrades. And there's many things that can go wrong in your applications. And then that's where the bang has happened, right? And what you do and how you actually recover from it. So I'm going to put on a head what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the head as like a software supplier that is, is, it might be typical to what you're doing in your daily job, right? That where you, you kind of your data, latest game based on a GitHub repository that you can see that it's just, uh, uh, you are just going to be a software supplier. And then there is a software supplier in this change, right? where basically everything that goes in from the code to the CID, CD, to the testing, to the deployment, right? In this scenario, I'm actually going to show you a Pac-Man, okay? So we're going to develop and deploy update features and release features to our clients, okay? In a quickly and accessible way that we can actually develop the codes in the pipeline and to do the testing. So what we're going to do is actually like the, uh, my software is like, we're going to do like a, a Pac-Man as a service, okay? And basically, I'm going to have a MongoDB backend. And basically, the front end is a Node.js that will search all the basically people coming onto the Pac-Man itself. And then it's, it's so what we have a Pac-Man service. Okay. So now you think of it, <coughs> what you is a very typical thing is from a security perspective, right? This is just on a high level that you are you might do a security scanning. <coughs> Then after that, then you will do a compliance check. You might check the code, you might check your image, you might check the files, right? Whether they are compliant with certain benchmarks or certain things within the uh, industry and some best practices in a sense, right? Then you want to give some policies enforcement, whether um, you want to have certain policies before you roll out that particular applications so that you can actually have uh, do it in a sense. And you want to implement continuous monitoring of the application stack on the be it on your own clusters or be it on your application itself. So some I put certain solutions out here, right? Basically, Trivia is like a, a open source for Aqua, right? Basically, then you have um, basically you do at your CI/CD pipelines for compliance checks, uh, for policy enforcements. I think you can see uh, there's Kivano OPA agents, right? Basically, you can have some policies so that hey, you have actually enforce some policies before you roll out the applications so that you can have um, uh, doing it in some way. Okay, next is that you want to do certain compliance and then you just want to have a runtime versus static to continuous monitoring. Last and not least is always about humans, right? You need to train your humans to, to, to do the correct way and to whip them into shape so that they can just follow your security policies and so you give a handbook in that sense. 
Okay. So from this company, what we do is we kind of do that. That basically we give a helm chart to our uh, suppliers, and we want we give them to the vendor, and they just run a uh, their helm, and then basically they'll just deploy our applications. That's about it. So that's how we goes from a supplier to the vendor in a sense. Okay. So what suppliers always do is that they most probably they will just do from a, uh, a security perspective, they just run a VAX, right? Uh, I will say that VAX is pretty new in this space, just that uh, if there's a vulnerability in the software, then I can just release a VAX document and then how we do that uh, vulnerability affect that software and then we give certain recommendation. Of course, then we have a secure bill of material, okay? so. Without further ado, let's go into um, where as, uh, as an end user, I'm going to I'm going to roll this out and let's let's see how it does. Okay, so let's go into the demo. Okay, so basically, um, okay, um, basically this is a Pac-Man, right? Uh, I'm going to actually run the Pac-Man, right, and then to rack up some scores. Uh, please forgive me if some of you are too young to understand what this game is, right? I basically played when I was like, yeah. So basically, you have a score that will um, save into a MongoDB, okay, and then this is saved into the MongoDB itself, right? And then when you go to, into the Pac-Man, uh, just now you saw the high score. That's where you can actually open up here, and then you can see that the Pac-Man, the high score is over here, right? So what you're going to see is you're going to see the 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 two. The two scores is going to be here, right? When you refresh it, the, the new high score is over there, right? That's actually resides in your MongoDB. Okay. Now, okay. So you can see that this is that that host name that is going to the, the MongoDB actually going to assess, right? So this is a can demo, so no no point copying that, right? So I get the service of that Pac-Man itself, right? Can see that I have a, a URL from Elastic Load Balancer to assess the Pac-Man applications and then another uh, URL to assess the Mongo. Now this you get to the good stuff. That is our my custom portal. And basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a backup of the Pac-Man applications. Right. And I'm actually going to run a backup of the existing Pac-Man applications and I'm actually going to do like a, 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 a script such that I'm going to have a consistent backup. I'm going to pause the MongoDB such that I can do a snapshot and then un, uh, then a snapshot in that sense. Okay. So what we actually use is this. Let me pause it here. Oh, okay. That's, uh, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, okay. Right, I should have done that. So basically what we are using is uh, a canister tool. Canister is our open source tool that most or most of it is actually contributed by Keston. So what is canister? Canister is actually a, a data management tool that helps you to write. I will just say that you need to uh, write scripts into um, where you can actually into your containers and then you can run certain tasks in that sense. So we use that to kind of tell, hey, MongoDB, please pause. Right, and then we can do a, a, a snapshot of it so that can be an application consistent snapshot. Okay, so let me continue my can demo. Right, this kind of explaining what canister is, it's an open source tool mainly contributed by us. Right, so you can see that there's a workflow that you can actually write your own actions to it so that you can write your own scripts of what you want to do it and then you can leverage actually into your back into your community's environment too. Okay. So saying that, the background has been run, and you can see that I actually do a snapshot and then I, uh, of the applications, and you go to my S3 bucket, and you can see that, hey, this is where all the metadata are being backed into my S3 bucket. Basically, we are supported for any object storage and NFS in a sense, right? So basically, you can see that, and basically, if you want it to be immutable. Immutable means that anyone can't go in to, to change any data. That's where we can do that, right? So basically, we are doing a snapshot, and a snapshot will actually use whatever CSI driver that you're using, and then export it out to a third-party storage. So can you see that uh, basically we are trying to running the trivi command, right? Basically, it's just to see that hey, uh, a scan field in a sense. Okay, so let's me let's walk through this. 
So what I'm going to do is um, they are going to do something to that at a particular right uh, cluster itself. So basically, you can see that um, uh, there's uh, scanning as actually enable. Okay. Right. So basically, we actually allowed the cluster, uh, the ingress, everything that public can actually assess. Okay. So what happened next is that some hacker is going to go inside my MongoDB, is going to encrypt all the data, and I'm actually going to show you uh, how we are going to uh, uh, recover for that. So right now, it's still, uh, it's actually, when you do a snapshot, it's pretty fast because we are utilizing the under storage. You can see it, it takes about 1 minute and 24 seconds uh, for uh, 8, gig, 8 GIB of uh, uh, applications. Right. Next will be I'm um, just careful to not to fall off the stage. Right. We will actually export out to uh, S3 storage, which you see that uh, it will take a while. Um, this is actually what we are doing is we are exporting the restore point to a S3 storage so that we know this restore point we can use it to restore from. Okay. So this is where we are actually slowly exporting out the, the data to uh, S3 storage and then uh, this will take a while because due to the uh, network traffic because it's just doing a network copy in a sense. Right, so this is where my high score is, just now I show you. Okay. Okay, now to put on the, the hacker hat, right? So going in, I'm going to run a database at, uh, attack script. Right, so basically now that this has been compromised and if I do a refresh, basically now my um, data, my high score has been encrypted, right, and basically has corrupted the uh, MongoDB in a sense. So if I go to, um, right, just, okay, next I'm going to run, just bear with me. Okay, I'm going to do a bucket attack. So what I'm going to do a bucket attack is it will count, it will go to that bucket, right, and then it will try to delete the objects there. Okay, that's that is in reality, right? Basically, if you look at this, if your if your data is being exposed, that's what usually a, a ransomware person will do. They go in and encrypt and then delete any of your backup so that you can't recover for that, right? So basically what I've done is, right, uh, I'm actually going to restore from here. You see I have many restore points that I can choose from, from where I can restore it. So if I go to a previous restore point, and basically I can just uh, go to that particular namespace and then I can actually restore this application back to where it was. Okay, so this is, you can see that when I back it up, that is uh, the config maps, the deployments, the secrets, the services, is all taken care of from the application itself. So when we back up our applications, we take care of everything, right? So then basically you can see my Pac-Man port come up and it is coming up and it basically is restoring all the artifacts that's there, okay? So because it's immutable, right, basically, uh, uh, although the, the hackers can't go in to, to delete the data, and that's where I can uh, restore the data from. That's where you can recover from, in a sense. So think of it, this is your last mode of security from where you can um, uh, recover your data. So earlier on, I was talking about Kivano policy as code, in a sense. Think of this, this can be part of your policy as code. Right. Basically, you can say, hey, before you roll out the applications, you want to do a backup before you go from version 1 to version 2, because then it can apply. If you, don't, uh, you force your developers to do that so that, can, so that they can actually fall back to anything in a sense. Okay? So... So you can see there is uh, no resources found in that Pac-Man namespace, and I will just move along, and it's slowly coming up. So this is actually, a, a, although I do it as a can demo, I did not follow it, so it's a life of, easily of how I recovered that, that data in a sense. So what we do is, on the recovery is this, we, cop we kind of copy the data from the PVCs to a temporary PVC first. 
Okay. Then we look at the deployments of what uh, your existing deployment. We bring out the applications. Once we bring out the applications, we will then point to the PVCs and then bring up the whole applications for you. That's what actually happening, right? So if I go back to the high score, and Bravo, right? Your business continue as possible, as, as possible. and then you know to pay that ransomware thing to back to your uh, attacker, right? If you get a service. You can see that I have my service over there and I can connect to my MongoDB and my uh, Pac-Man application already. Right? So everything it will all bring up for you, right? In a sense. Right? So let's move along. Okay. Um, so basically, attacks can come in different forms, right? You actually, if you look at uh, what I show you in this, in terms of the access, Right, where you are looking at access to the database, and then there's, there's main things you want to do at the backups and your sense. So let me go through. So when we talk about one of the things that we are looking from an access perspective, right, the default configuration and basically what you do is I just went to do the Helm repo, and then I can just do a Helm install, and then basically I have a Pac-Man, right. So if you have a back, um, you have a backup of it, right, they will just find an entry point, and then Compromise the user accounts and miss and do some misconfiguration. Then, then most probably they are going to put the data on, onto the web, then to just sell it in a sense, right? So they are going to get uh, it can be an internal misconfiguration or, or employee in a sense. Okay, so that's if you go back to two zero two two, that is where we have the malware targets, communist clusters, the the one or the first. First one, uh, Hinegard, right? This uh, what they will take over. They will actually go and run ports into into the communist clusters, and then they will just use your, that your cluster to do certain stuff in a sense. Okay. Actually, to to my cryptography, right? So in that in a database, right? You must make sure that uh, whatever that you are configuring to the database is actually secure, uh, not misconfigured. You want to have an encryption. Right. So basically, that's where I'm coming from. Is this we have we need to have backup, right? And we need to 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 recover from delete or corruptions and or any any types of ransomware attacks in the sense. Okay. Last and not least, okay. Uh, let's look at other things that you can actually uh, improve, right? Just certain factors here, right? My MFA, right? You want to do multi-factor authentications. You want to really uh, regular update and patch your system. You want to do uh, least users, uh, user uh, uh, privileges. Um, encrypt your data in, in transit and address and other RBAC things, okay? Nice. All right. Uh, so thank you. I think I have five more minutes. Um, any any other questions from the floor? Is there any questions from the floor? If not, maybe five minutes. I can just quickly show you a live demo. All right. No questions. And feel free to shout it out if you want to. Let me show your live demo right now. Okay. All right. Same thing. K K Man Pac-Man, right? Basically, I'm actually running this on a uh, Red Hat OpenShift on Azure. Okay. And can see that um, just now it's pretty fast. You can see there's deployments, there's ports, different kind of artifacts in this K Man. I will. I, what I can do is I can integrate with different kind of authentications. Okay, so basically I can I have a multi-cluster view, I have a, a Azure view, and a EKS view, right? So in going to that one, once Caster is, it can do a Caster can be done on a Helm install or it can be done on a marketplace. So once install, you actually discover all the applications that's running in it, and basically what I'm going to do is I actually have a policies that I have pre-created from here. And this is where I can do a, a snapshot and I can do a backup frequency of where and like a minimum of five minutes. And basically, I had have a snapshot retention of how long I want to keep the snapshot for. Other than that is that I, you see, keeping the snapshot, you want to export it to a third party storage because if someone goes into your namespace to delete that namespace, uh, it's gone. 
right? You want to export it out to a third party storage, and then that's where all the kind of different kind of storage provider with support in terms of the cloud players are there, right? And if they are NFS or S3 bucket, okay, basically we can support it in that sense. Okay, saying that is that, remember I just talked about uh, 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 canister, this where you can have kind of hooks uh, that we can tell you, it, it can be an operation bash script also that I, I want to check whether is there enough storage I just, or I want to do certain things uh, uh, from an operation perspective before and after a backup and before and after restore. So you can do all this kind of uh, uh, canister. Uh, so other than this, this is actually the, the, the policy. Right, and if you want to it to easily incorporate into your gig op process, basically is is Keston is actually built from a Kubernetes API up, right? So basically, you can use you can copy it into your gig ops or DevOps or our CD, and then can automate it. Okay, so saying that, uh, assuming that I have actually backed up these applications, so uh, if I go to this Cayman Pac Man, I can go to rest I can do a snapshot here, I can do an export, and I can go to this restore. You can see I have multiple restore points over here. I can choose a particular restore point that I want to restore. So, pardon me for speaking so fast. Uh, I have a snapshot and I have an exported copy, and these are where I can actually restore from. Right, I can actually create a new namespace to actually restore to if I want to, right? And I also can do like a volume clone restore. What's a volume clone restore? Let's say for example, my Pac-Man have a MongoDB. I want to restore my MongoDB into it and basically it will not affect the Pac-Man application. Basically, maybe I think I can do a file copy from one volume to another, right? And then last and least, these are, you see, I actually, all the artifacts here are being backed up. And then if I want to, let's say for example, I only want to restore only one secret, I actually can do a granular restoration and point to what, where I want to actually restore from. Now saying that I have another cluster, an uh, EKS cluster, right? That is where I want to kind of show you, hey, I, the, 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 the main fun, fundamental thing of what Caston is very, very powerful is that we can actually back up from any Kubernetes cluster and then we can restore to any Kubernetes cluster itself. Why? Because we have a transformers, transformation engine that can actually transform, apply the transform to the restore uh, resources. So I have a Pac-Man EKS uh, transformation template here and what it does is this, right? Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the persistent volume cranes. I'm going to change the JSON value such that I'm going to change it to an EBS storage class. So it used to back up from an Azure, which is a managed CSI. I'm going to change it to a storage class of a EBS storage. Next is that I'm going to change my storage, uh, my service services from a, a route to a ELB. So basically, when I restore, it will then be able to leverage the elastic load balancer in AWS. Other than this, I can actually change, let's say for example, you're running on a uh, uh, communist cluster of 1.25 right now, and you want to restore to uh, the latest 1.30, 1.31, right? That's where you can actually can play around with the APIs, and basically any, any artifacts that you want, Basically, if I say I back up as uh, 8 gig of RAM, I want to change the config map to be uh, 4 gig, right? And I want to have the certificate in the new clusters. I want to change the deployments. I want to change certain things in a sense before I restore it. This is where you can actually uh, manipulate the artifacts so that it works in your new cluster. So things of this, think of how Keston can help in terms of the backup and recovery and that upgrade and migration of your different Kubernetes cluster. That was a very fast demo, speed demo, right? So, uh, right on time. So, any questions? Yes. Yes. Mm. All right. Uh, what he asked is there was a volume only restoring and a data only restore. So for a volume restore, there will be no downtime. What we are going to do is we are actually going to clone the volume, right? Clone the volume for you. So in the, the applications will not see that particular chrome volume so that you can do whatever manipulating you want from this volume that can grab certain file to existing volume in that sense, you want to do that. That will be a zero delta. When we talk about a data-only restore, that is where um, 
we will restore the data to the existing PVCs, right? Uh, we will not, uh, that is where, you know, we will actually restore the, 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 uh, the data to you. The pods will still be running, right? So then it, it's a bit tricky, but we are only, that's where uh, options that you only want to restore the data, right? So when you say, is that zero downtime? Yeah, because your data is not available anymore. You are trying to restore the data. So basically, yeah, while you're restoring that is the, the, the I'll say that it's a downtime period, but the pods are still up and running, right? Any, any other questions? All right, uh, feel free to ask me. I'll just stay around here for five, 10 minutes so that if you all have any other questions, I can just come to you all, right? Okay, so th thank you all.